I love credit spreads. They really allow me to trade part-time and allow me to work that full-time job without having to worry about the status of my trade. Today, I'm gonna walk you guys through one, a quick summary about what it is, and then two, how to really leverage credit spreads to maximize your profit, as well as trade more passively while working that full-time job. This is Credit Spread Investing, where I like to show you guys not only the concepts, but the what and the how so that you too can replicate this and do it yourself. So if you guys like content like this, make sure you guys like and subscribe. It'll really help the channel out. Let's talk a little bit about credit spreads. If you guys don't know what they are, make sure you guys check out this video linked in the upper right-hand corner. But a quick one-minute recap. If you guys already know this, make sure you guys skip to this timestamp right here. Credit spreads are a defined risk option strategy, which means that you can only make a defined amount and lose a defined amount. How it works is that you would sell and buy options on the same underlying asset. As you guys can see on the screen, there are really only two main forms of credit spreads. Credit spreads are directional in nature. So there's the bull put spread and the bear call spread. A bull put spread, ABC 50, 45 put. What this would mean is that you would be selling the 55 put and you would be buying the 45 put. Because this is a defined loss strategy, your max profit profit will be the dollar that you collected from selling this 50, 45 put spread. Your max loss would be essentially 50 minus 40, which would be 500 minus the X, which is the credit that you received from selling credit that you received from selling this one ABC 50, 45 put. So for example, if X is 100, your, your max profit will be 100 and your max loss will be 400. Okay, so we'll just do that for now. So this would be 100 right here and this would be 400 right here. On the profit and loss chart that I just drew on, that essentially shows you how you can make or lose money on a credit spread. A bull put spread means that as long as the price remains above leg that you sell, which in this case is 50, you will be profitable and you'll make max profit of in this case $100. If it ever goes below 45, you would then make your max loss, which would be 400 in this case. Anywhere in between, you'll either make a little bit of money or lose a little bit of money. But essentially, you want it to be above 50. So in terms of profit, you want it to be greater than the $50 or the leg that you're selling. Now, on the flip side, you'll be looking at a bear cost spread. The bear cost spread means that you think the market is either going to go sideways or go down. Opposite of a bull put spread, which you're thinking the market will go up. So in this case, ABC 5560 call, what you would do now was you would be selling the 55 and you would be buying the 60. Let's assume that you have the same max loss and max profit, which because you're collecting the same amount of credit by selling this credit spread, which will be 100 and 400. Now, because you're expecting the market to go down or in this case, maybe sideways, as long as the market and the stock remains below 55, you would make max profit of $100 in this case, and anything above 60, you would make max loss of 400, right? So to profit in this case, you want the market to stay below your bought, your sold leg, which would be the $55 option that you're selling. Now let's take a look at my trade. I started the day at around 6.45 a.m. Pacific time uh, with a XPS 45, 45, 45, 40, bull put spread where I collected $110 a spread, which is around a 22% ROI. I'll go into why and how I decided to take this trade in the latter half of this video, which is really the most important part if you guys wanna learn how to re replicate this. So make sure you guys stick around for that. That one expired out of the money at the end of the day and I collected $110 a spread. I sold two of those, so 220. And then later in the day, around noon when I had time, I then sold another 55.70 and 55.75 call credit spread. I collected 290. I bought it back for a total of 140, making a profit of 150 dollars on that one spread. So on that day, I made 370 dollars, or around a 37% ROI. Now this is a really cool concept. By opening up both a put and a call spread, I we basically turned this into what we call an iron condor, right? My max risk or my max loss, 500 dollars minus the credit that I receive. Why is that, right? The idea is very simple. The market can't be both 
above 45.45 and below 45.70 at the same time. If it's at 45.75, I will still collect $110. If it's at below 45.40, I will then collect $290. So essentially what we're doing here is we're changing the risk loss ratio in a sense. So my max profit for this iron condor is the 110 plus 290 that I collected, which is $400. What that means now for my max loss is instead of it being 500 minus 110 per leg or 290 per leg, my max loss is now only $100. If it's individually, then my max loss would be 390 and my max pro max loss for this one would be 210. But now by making it into an iron condor, it's only 100. So that's the beauty of credit spreads in general. The real beauty comes from how and when you guys sell the put and when to sell the call, where you guys are really just minimizing the risk to the best of your abilities. 30 minute, I'm gonna do things a little different this time. I'm just gonna give you guys a trade first, and then we'll talk about how I decided to enter. And this is the day that we're looking at. So I'm gonna get a little bit closer here. Right, so this is the 24th and this is a day of interest. So basically the morning, in the morning, the moment that it opened and it gapped up, I sold a 40, the 45, 45, 45, 40 put credit spread in the bull direction. It was a low of the day before, right before it closed, so that acts as support. And so even if I were wrong, there's a chance that this can bounce up and I can still win. Because again, credit spreads are directional. As the day went on, you can obviously tell that the trade went in my favor. Around 8.30, I went to work and I just let it play out, and I set my stop losses accordingly at 100%, 50%, and 25%. So if you guys have, you guys wanna check out that strategy, link in the upper right-hand corner for that video. Now, the market went up and up and up and up, and around 11.30, it hit a peak, which also happened to be a resistance that was confirmed a couple days ago, right? And the moment that it hit that area of resistance, it started backing off, and around 12 o'clock is when I started looking at the market, and I was like, okay, and soon, Shortly thereafter, I decided to sell a 45.70, 45.75 at the money credit spread. You can see the level right here, 45.75, 45.70 credit spread at the money and close it out a couple minutes later for that $150 profit. Uh, obviously, if I had held on to it, I, made a, I would have made max profit because the market ended up at 45.68. Now, with that being said, you can kind of see the power of the credit spread, right? By selling a put early on the morning, letting it ride up, and then selling a call credit spread as it comes back down, I basically am able to trade the direction without having to con be concerned about how much it moves. Some of you guys may be thinking, if I had bought a call here and rode this wave up, I would have made more money. That is probably correct. However, the problem with that is because I have to go to work. Right, so there's no way for me to understand how fast and how far something can go before I have the chance to check my phone whenever I have a moment free at work, which happened to be at noon this day. Before I had a chance to check my phone and I'm not able to take profit accordingly, or if I set a trailing stop loss that's too wide or too short, and I'm not, and it, it stops out before the move even happens. Right, and you don't really necessarily want that because you don't have the ability to trade actively. Now let's talk about why I took the trades and and what prompted me to take that trade. So if you guys are long-term viewers of the channel, this is where I have my spiel about Mac. If you guys don't know what Mac is, make sure you guys check out this video, linked in the upper right-hand corner, because it will teach you everything there is to know about Mac. M stands for market trend, A stands for area of interest, C stands for criteria of entry. So before I enter any trade, and this is the market prep that I was talking about, I always have to understand what the trend is. So in this moment, you can tell the market is in an uptrend, A to a B to a C formed a lower low, and so it's back up into an uptrend. It's pretty simple. Long-term trend is up. Now on this day, on Friday, the short-term trend or medium-term trend is also up because it's in its upswing. A uh, area of support would be right here, which it bounced off of. An area resistance would be right around 40, 45, 80. So the next time the market can have a chance of rebounding, Bouncing down will be around this 4580 area. So when it's before 4580, I will trade up. If it's at 4580, I would wait and see what direction it's going. This goes into the next letter, A, areas of entry. I already indicated two areas of interest here. First one is at 43, 4530, which is the area of support, which pre used to be a resistance. 
So we can draw a line here. It's actually an area, but we'll just draw a line for simplicity's sake, right? That's one line. And then we also talked about this area of resistance at 4580. And then as it enters into this area of resistance, I could theoretically trade down if C, my criteria of entry has been fulfilled. And so for me, I normally trade on the five minutes. So we're gonna drop it down to the five and we're just gonna look at what C means. C stands for criteria of entry. Criteria of entry means that there has to be something that allows me to enter this trade. Trading in the direction of a uh, of the pattern, in this case, the, the bullish direction, I have to understand what is a bullish signal. It would be in maybe a bullish confirmation, a strong body confirmation, big bodied. And I have, a, again, another video on candlestick patterns that you can see right here, linked in the upper right-hand corner. Now, if I'm trading the reversal, I could be looking for a lower high. I could be looking for a breaker structure. The first early put trade, a 45, 45, 45, 40, is very, very quite simple. On the five minute, you can see that there is, I'll zoom in a little bit, that it's just <clears throat> an easy trade up because the trend is up. And the moment the market opened, it had a strong start to the day. And the moment that you see this candle right here, right here, it's basically a go for me because it's it, it's a confirmation that the trend is going to continue. And that's a very simple trade to take. I took a 45.45, which is down here. I could probably sell it at a 45.50 if you wanted to. Depends on your risk tolerance. I just sold it at 45.45, but 45.50 is probably even better because the trend is up. So you can take a little bit more of a risk here. And the day just continue to go on and go on and go on and go on. This is a very simple trade, right? Sometimes trading isn't very difficult. You can just take the trade as it presents itself. Not worried about these areas here. Some of you guys were like, oh, credit spread, right? Like there's there's some areas of resistance here. I'm not concerned about it, right? Because the trend is up and areas of supports, areas of resistances on the five minutes is probably going to get broken anyways. But I'm still on the lookout that can go against my trade. So if this, for example, rebounded down, revisited this area, formed a lower high and bounced back down, then I'm out of my trade. But because it didn't, it formed a higher low and continue to go up. I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm chilling. Now, as it gets closer and closer to this 48, 40, 45, 80 area of resistance, you can see if I was trading around 1150, this can probably be a candle for you guys to enter. When I trade reversals, this is also a very, I guess, a personal thing. I don't like to take the first sign of weakness. And this is something that I've learned throughout trading throughout my, throughout my days. Uh, because usually speaking, the trend hasn't been broken. Even though there's signs of selling here, you want to see continu continued signs of selling. So I normally wouldn't take this trade because it's still not enough weakness. I want to see it break this uptrend. So this candle here is actually very is, is actually very indicative of the short-term uptrend ending. And what I'm really looking here is a break of structure. A break of structure means that this right here now, as you can clearly tell, is in an uptrend, right? It goes from a low to a high. That's an uptrend. What I'm looking for is for that uptrend to end. And by that, it means that it has a break and area of support. Because I'm trading uh, a reversal pattern, I'm looking for maybe an area right around here. It did not break past this low. However, it formed a lower high right here. That's a great sign. Right, if you think about it, this went from a low, like low to a high, to a lower, a higher, a higher low, to a higher high, to a higher low. Very simple A, B, C, D pattern, right? Like it just keeps going and going, and you can keep drawing those lines up, right? And now you're looking at this. It went from a high to the same low, now it formed a lower high. Now the only thing that I'm looking for here is whether or not this structure the support will be broken. The moment the support is convincingly broken, then I know that there's weakness in the market. It formed a lower high, which is really good, right? Because before it was always forming higher highs. Now, once it formed a lower high, it's gonna start wedging into this area. And now I'm just waiting for a candlestick to break and close below. On this candlestick right here, that's when I entered 45.70, 45.75. And then basically closed it five to 10 minutes later, right on this candlestick right here, right before close. By doing this, I'm actually trading the trends without having to worry about how far it falls. All I'm really looking for here is for this trend to fall one candlestick below and I will, I will just crush the hell out of this option of pricing because I'm at the money. That's a little bit more complicated, but what I'm looking for is just the market to go in my direction. Obviously, if, I did, if the market didn't go in my direction here, I would have stopped myself out at $100. I would have lost $100, but I still made 210 the day on the day. If I lost 100, my, my maximum 
earning will be 120. I still would have made money. So for me, it made a lot of sense to open up this into an iron condor because then I can give myself the opportunity to make more money without maximize, without increasing my actual risk. And the beauty of doing it this way, as opposed to selling it in Iron Condor right off the bat, and I hate doing that, and I don't think anyone should do that, is because if I were to sell an Iron Condor or sell a call for $290 at open, I'd probably have to sell it in like right where the market is at. And you wanna let the market move first, tell you the, the direction is correct, and then open up an Iron Condor. You have to know what you're looking for, and again, I'm gonna stress, you have to game plan this out. When I'm trading, I have a game plan. I even game plan this scenario where if it hits a higher uh, into my resistance, I'd be looking for either a break of that resistance or a bounce off of that resistance. I plan that the day ahead. This gives you the edge, it keeps you grounded, and it makes sure that you have the capacity to think while you're trading. And spreads are really a great way for you to just take, a, take advantage of the market trend while not having to worry about the specifics of when to get out. I've, I've taken a lot of trades where I've sold options and bought options on the same day, and I'll make a video about that as well. And if it is up, I'll link it up in the upper right-hand corner here. So make sure you guys check that out when it is out. Okay, that's about it. Just want to give you guys a quick rundown of how this works. If you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comment section below. Happy to answer any questions that you guys have. Credit spreads are again just my version of selling options so that I can day trade while I work. You guys, if you guys are interested in another example of day trading with credit spreads, make sure you guys check out this video here where I take you in depth through another one of these day trades for credit spreads and show you guys how easy it can be if you guys have the right system in place. Again, thank you guys for your time. Stay safe in the market. Until next time, peace.